to an evening of music to celebrate the great, if not the greatest tenor ever, Enrico Caruso. I'm Mark Milhofer, and this is my very talented accompanist, Kotlin Chiloch. In addition to being the greatest tenor in the world, Caruso also saw himself as a songwriter and lyricist. He wrote the lyrics and the music for a number of songs, many of which he also recorded. The great tenor also inspired many of his friends and accompanists to write specifically for him, creating big hits around the world, but also forgotten songs, long forgotten songs. This programme will include almost all of these songs, uh, only missing a few due to time constraints. But before we start, I'm going to switch to Italian, as I know there are also people tuning in from the Caruso Museum in his old house near Florence and also from the town where Caruso was conceived, uh, just north of Naples, his parents moving to Naples shortly after he was born. Buonasera e benvenuti ai nostri amici in Italia. Questa sarà una serata di musica per celebrare il grande, se non il più grande tenore di tutti i tempi, Enrico Caruso. Sono Mark Milhofer e questa è la mia talentuosa accompagnatrice, Cota Lincilò. Oltre ad essere il più grande tenore del mondo, Caruso si considerava anche un cantautore e un paroliere, ma ha scritto i testi e la musica per una serie di canzoni, molti delle quali ha anche registrato. Il grande tenore ha anche ispirato molti dei suoi amici e accompagnatori a scrivere appositamente per lui creando grandi successi in tutto il mondo, ma anche canzoni dimenticate dal tempo. Questo programma includerà quasi tutte queste canzoni, ma ne mancano solo alcune a causa dei limiti di tempo. Un benvenuto molto speciale ai nostri spettatori dal Museo Enrico Caruso nella Villa Bello Sguardo a Lastra a Signa, e anche a quelli di Piedimonte Matese, la città dove fu concepito Caruso prima che la sua famiglia si trasferisse a Napoli. So let's begin. The first half consists of songs written by Caruso, which includes either just the words, just the music, or both. Adorable Tourment, or A Gypsy Waltz, was written in 1907 and recorded in January the following year and was the first composition that we know of by Caruso. He and Richard Barthélemy are listed as the writers of the music, while the words were written by Roland Gaël, the pseudonym of Léon de la Bonne. Riccardo, or Richard Barthélemy, was a French-Italian composer and pianist. He was particularly suitable as Caruso's accompanist, as he was a fluent Neapolitan speaker, having learned to speak it while studying at a conservatory in Naples. Fun fact, he won the 1912 Olympic Music Gold Medal for his Olympic Triumph March. He worked with Caruso from 1904 to 1917 and later wrote a memoir about their time together but frustratingly makes no mention of them composing together. Adorable to a Bientôt, fin. 
It was especially composed by Caruso for Henry W. Savage's stage production, The Million, a successful farce, uh, which was made into a presumably silent film in 1914, sadly without Caruso. Caruso wrote the melody, a simple waltz, while Earl Carroll wrote the words. Uh, Earl Carroll was an American theatrical producer, director, songwriter, and composer. In 1912, he was working at the music publishing house of Leo Feist, where he began writing song lyrics of his own, over 400 of them, in fact, uh, with this being one of his more notable successes. He then went on to write the English versions for the next three of Caruso's songs, uh, but I stress the word version as they are far from being translation. Sing the bells that you stung as you call 
with Ada Giacchetti in Livorno, and the two became lovers. However, Ada was married and divorce was out of the question. But the two moved in together and had two sons, with Ada giving up her singing career to be with Caruso. To cut a long story short, almost exactly ten years later, Ada ran away with the family chauffeur, taking her youngest son with her. Caruso was distraught and chased after them. He managed to get his son back, but Arda wouldn't return. The pain of this betrayal stayed with Caruso for many years, and he put a lot of his feelings into the words of these three songs. Tiempo antico. Oh, my God. 
September 1919. Hey! 
glasses, bottles and shakers ready for our cocktail demonstration. And I hope you will do the same. <clears throat> and can I take this opportunity to ask for your help by buying virtual tickets for this evening or simply donating via the donate button on my website's homepage. We musicians are very limited in what work we can currently do. Uh, I should be rehearsing in Berlin at the moment, but for obvious reasons that isn't happening. So please do see this as the next best thing to a live concert and buy a ticket. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to my latest CD that has just been released. Over the last two summers, I have recorded the complete folk song settings by Benjamin Britten, along with another talented pianist, Marcos Colastra. You can listen to all the tracks on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe uh, or buy a CD. Thank you very much. Welcome back. This second half is all about songs that were written for Caruso, and I shall be performing them in order of composition. Tout non lui voit plus ben is one of the very first songs, as opposed to operatic arias, that Caruso recorded. Despite some differences of opinion amongst researchers, this was probably recorded at Caruso's fifth recording session in October 1903. It was written by Caruso's friend and colleague, the baritone Antonio P. Corsi. But it's not entirely, entirely clear why Caruso felt it merited recording. As we'll see. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that P. Corsi was also in the cast of the Traviata when Caruso first sang with Arabi Chacchetti.
Caruso's next recording session, session in April 1904 was very brief, just two tracks, but created this very famous song, Mattinata, by Ruggero Leoncavallo. He wrote it especially for Caruso and for the G&T Company. Sadly, nothing to do with gin, but standing for the more ordinary gramophone and typewriter company. And he accompanied Caruso on the piano in the recording. Caruso had already recorded the famous aria Vesti la Giubba from Leon Cavallo's opera Pagnacci two years earlier in his second recording session, and was probably best known for his portrayal of this role. So much so that he even made a silent film of it. That was a fun fact of mine. Oh, 
it's now 1905, and we have this wonderful song by Luigi Denza called Vieni. Denza was born just south of Naples and ended up as a professor of singing at the Royal Academy of Music in London. He is best remembered for composing Riccoli Mutilare. So we're not doing that. Oh, uh -huh. 
it's 1913, and we skip one piece, an Ave Maria, written by Percy Kahn and recorded that same year. <clears throat> Instead, we go back to Leon Carallo and another song dedicated to the tenor who was probably making him a very rich man for all his Pagliacci royalties. Recorded in April 1913, La Chate Amar is described as a romanza and shows, for me at least, how Caruso's voice must have been changing into a heavier instrument. I mention the recordings and their dates because they are a huge part of Caruso's life and legacy. His contract with the Victor Talking Machine Company became the longest running money making machine in recording history. But even before he had signed with them, he had already started recording when in 1902 he was heard by an enterprising recording technician, Fred Gaisberg, of the Gramophone and Typewriter Company, who immediately booked him to record 10 single records, which were an instant success. It has sometimes been claimed that the gramophone made Caruso, but really it was Caruso who made the gramophone, or at least accelerated its popularity. Lascia ti amar. Two. 
And he's back to Naples with two songs by Salvatore Fucito, who was Caruso's friend, coach, and accompanist at the end of Caruso's life. He also wrote this book, uh, Caruso and the Art of Singing, and shortly after Caruso's death. In it, he says that composition for Caruso was one of his hobbies, and he would sometimes invent a melody himself, and also gave generous encouragement to those of his friends who composed. The two songs by Fucito, both recorded in 1919, are in Caruso's native Neapolitan. Firstly, Sultan Carte, and then Scorla. Hello. 
Catherine, Catherine, what can I do? Stop parlando. 